Diyos. Maraming salamat po sa buhay at lakas na aming tagnay. Sa liwanag ng kaisipan at sa pagkakataon, maipagpatuloy ang pag-aaral ng mga kabataan. Gabay mo po ang bawat isa sa amin. Ano man ang bahagi na aming gagampanan, naway maging maayos at matagumpay ang pagtuturo at pag-aaral na aming gagawin sa aming mundo. Patawarin mo po kami sa aming mga pagkulang at pagkakasala. At sa aming paggawa, ikaw po ang aming makasama. Amen. Good day, grade 9 student. It's me once again, Sir Harold, your art teacher from Big 9 National High School. And welcome to the world of Western classical plays and operas. Theater began from myth, ritual, and ceremony. Early society perceived connections between actions performed by groups of people or leaders to a certain society and these actions move from habit to tradition, to ritual, to ceremony due to human desire and need for entertainment. The repeated rehearsals, performances, and creations of different actions broke the ground for theater. Theater means place to sing, but it is more than the building where performance takes place. To produce theater, a playwright writes the script. The director rehearses the performers. The designers and technical crew produce props to create the scene. And actors and actresses perform on stage. Then, it will only be through theater act when an audience witnesses it. We are now in the last quarter of our subject. And today, as we continue another art awaiting experience awaits you. As we unveil the different theatrical art forms, elements and principles of art, and the weakness in terms of visual and performance art forms, of the Western classical plays and opera. But before we go, let us first be reminded once again with the protocol to follow during the live streaming class. Protocols to follow during the live streaming class. Respect everyone. Agree to recognize and abide the protocols in the live stream and respect the feelings, rights, or traditions of each and every one. No hate speech. Do not express or discourage violence towards a person or group based on something such as race, religion, sex, or sexual orientation. Be guided with the anti-cyberbullying law. Make sure that everyone feels safe. Bullying of any kind isn't allowed. And regarding comments about things such as race, religion, culture, sexual orientation, gender or identity will not be tolerated. No promotion of products or items. Give more to this group than you take. Selling of products, self-promotion, spam, and irrelevant links aren't allowed. Use appropriate words in giving suggestions, comments, and queries. We're all in this together to create a welcoming environment. Let's treat everyone with respect. Healthy debates are natural but kindness is required. After the FB live streaming, attend discussion class in the FB Messenger classroom with the subject teacher. Maximize the features of FB Messenger to be used in FB Messenger classrooms such as text chat, audio calls, video rooms, and multiple screen sharing. I hope everyone will be guided by the protocols for us to maintain order during this session. 
So allow me to give you the competencies that you are about to learn in this video. At the end of the lesson, you are expected to identify the selected theatrical forms from the different art periods. Research on the history of theatrical forms and their evolution. Identifies the elements and principles of arts as manifested in Western classical plays and operas. And last, defines what makes selected Western classical plays and operas unique through visual presentation. Before you proceed with our lesson, let us go back on your previous lesson that have been discussed when you are in grade 7 by playing a game entitled Elements in Theater Art. Try to classify the given elements used in theater art in each category that I will show you in this activity. I will reveal the answer after 15 seconds. By the way, theater arts are a collaborative art form which combines words, voice, movements, and visual elements to express meaning. Are you ready? Let's begin. First category. Basic elements of musical play or theater. These elements are used to create a musical play or theater. The basic elements of musical play or theater are character, dialogue, music, plot, and theme. Second category, elements of artistic expression. These are essential elements to express the artistic aspects in a musical play or theater. artistic expressions are color, line, movement, rhythm, sound, space, and texture. Third category, tools for an actor or actress. These tools are used to show their best performances in acting. Our body, emotion, and voice. Congratulations, dear student. You always amaze me. We will go back on the different periods or eras that have been discussed in the previous quarters in Arts 9. We will recognize it in our activity called Through Time. In this activity, Arrange in chronological order of the following periods or eras. Write the letters in the correct sequence, and you will be given 15 seconds to key in your answer in our comment section. We have A. Ancient period B. Baroque period C. Medieval period D. Neoclassic period E. Renaissance period and F. Romantic period. Are you ready? Your 15 seconds timer will start now. And here is the correct sequence of the following periods. A 
it's great that you arranged the sequence correctly. Good job! Before you get fully excited, you may want to participate in our short activity by typing your answer to each number in our comment section. In this activity, arrange the jumbled letters to form a word in 5 seconds. Are you ready? Number 1. Someone who writes plays. Did you answer play right? You are right. Number two. A theatrical piece that tells a story totally through the music. The correct answer is opera. Number three. It refers to a play with an unhappy ending. If your answer is tragedy, you are right. Number 4 refers to light and humorous drama with happy ending. Did you answer comedy? You are correct. For the last double letter, this refers to an ancient Greek burlesque with a chorus of Satyr. It's Satyr play. Great job! Welcome back to ancient theater. European theater began in ancient Greece. It began around 700 BC with festivals honoring their many gods such as Dionysus the god of wine and fertility. This religious festival was called the Cult of Dionysus. The city-states of Athens was the center of significant cultural, political, and military power during this period, and where the festivals and competitions were usually performed. The three well-known Greek tragedy playwrights were Sophocles. Euripides and Aeschylus. The theater of ancient Greece consisted of three types of drama tragedy, comedy, and the satyr play. Tragedy is a compound of two Greek words, tragos or goat, and od meaning song. Referring to goat sacrificing to Dionysus before performances or the goat skins worn by the performers. In Greece, tragedy was the most admired type of play. It dealt with tragic events and have an unhappy ending, especially one concerning the downplaying character. Sestis was the first actor and introduced the use of mask and was called the father of tragedy. The actors, directors, and dramatists were all the same person. After some time, only three actors could perform in each play. Due to limited numbers of actors allowed on stage, the chorus played a very active part of the theater. Music was often played during the Men performed songs to welcome Dionysus and women were not allowed to perform. Competitions in song, dance, music, scenic representation, and bodily exercises were done during the festival. And to promote a common identity, Athenians spread this festival to their numerous allies. Comedy plays were derived from imitation. There were no traces of their origin. Aristophanes wrote most of the comedy plays. Out of these 11 plays, like the Strug survived. A humorous tale about a strong woman 
who led a female coalition to end war in Greece. Cyclops, an adventure comedy by Euripides. Theater plays contain comic elements to lighten the overall mood for a serious play with a happy ending. A satyr play was a short, light-hearted tale piece performed after each trilogy of the tragedy. It is an ancient Greek form of tragic comedy. It featured half-men, half ghost half characters known as satyrs. They were awful, ridiculous, and usually drunk. The satyr characters lasted after everyone on stage, and they delivered the most humorous lines, and often at the expense of others. The theaters were large, open-air structure constructed on the slope of the hill. The major components of Greek theaters are labeled on the diagram. Orchestra. The orchestra, which literally means dancing space, was normally circular. It was a level space where the chorus would dance, sing, and interact with the actors who were on the stage near the scene. The earliest orchestra were simply made of hard earth, but in the classical period, some orchestras began to think with marble and other materials. In the center of orchestra, there was often a female or altar. The orchestra of the Theater of Dionysus in the Athens was about 60 feet in diameter. Theatron The theatron, literally viewing place, is where the spectator sat. The theatron was usually part of the hillside overlooking the orchestra and often wrapped around a large portion of the orchestra. Expectators in the 5th century BC probably sat on cushions or boards, but by the 4th century, the theatron of many Greek theaters had marked their feet. Skinny. The skinny literally, tent, was the building directly behind the stage. During the 5th century, the stage of the Theater of Dionysus in Athens was probably raised only two or three steps above the level of the orchestra and was perhaps 25 feet wide and 10 feet deep. The skinny was directly behind the stage and was usually decorated as a palace, temple, or other building depending on the needs of the play. It had at least one set of doors, and actors could take entrances and exits through them. There was also access to the roof of the skinny from behind, so that actors playing gods and other characters such as the watchman of the beginning of Aeschylus, Agamemnon, to the pier on the roof if needed. Paradox The paradoi, in plural term, literally passage plays, are the paths by which the chorus and some actors, such as those representing messengers or people returning from abroad, made their entrances and exit. The audience also used them to enter and exit the theater before and after the performance. Roman Theater The theater of the ancient Rome started in the 3rd century BC. It had varied and interesting art forms, like festival performances of the sea theater, acrobatics, the staging of comedies of Plato's and the high verbally elaborate tragedies of Seneca. Although Rome had a native traditions of performance, the Hellenization, historical spread of ancient Greek culture, of Roman culture in the 3rd century BC, had an intense and energizing effect of the Roman theater and encouraged the development of Latin literature. 
According to the Roman historian Livy, in the 4th century BC, the Etruscan actors were the first to appear in theater. While in 240 BC, Roman drama began with the plays of Livius and Dronicus, remained popular throughout late antiquity. By the 4th century AD, 102 out of 176 ludicrous lisi or public games being dedicated to theater. Besides a considerably lower number of gladiator and chariot racing events. Greek theaters had a great influence on the Roman theater too. The Triumvir Complex was one of the first permanent non-wooden theaters in Rome whose structure was somewhat like the Theatron of Athens. The building was a part of the multi-use complex that included enlarged quadriporticus or a column quadrangle. Directly behind the scanning front, which is an elaborately decorated background of theater stage enclosed by the large column porticos, with an expansive garden complex of fountains and statues. There were rooms also that were dedicated to the exposition of art and other works collected by Pompeii Magnus, which were located along the stretch of covered arcade. The usual themes for Roman theater plays were chariot races, gladiators, and public executions. The Romans loved a good spectacle. They loved to watch combat, admired for blood sports and gladiator competition. The more realistic the violence, the more it would have pleased Roman audiences. The Christians, however, opposed the barbaric themes of the plays and closed all theater. Medieval Theater During the medieval era, theater performances were not allowed throughout Europe. To keep the theater alive, minstrels, though denounced by the church, performed in markets, public places, and festivals. They traveled from one town to another as puppeteers, jugglers, storytellers, dancers, singers, and other theatrical acts. These minstrels were viewed as dangerous and pagan. Churches in Europe started staging their own theater performances during Easter Sundays with biblical stories and events. Eventually, some plays were brought outside the church using their portrayal of the devil and hell. An example of this play is the Mysteria de Adam or the Mystery of Edom. The story revolves on Edom and Eve and ends with the devil capturing and bringing them to hell. Over the centuries, the plays revolved around biblical themes from the story of the creation to the last judgment. Renaissance Theater Renaissance theater arts were characterized by a return of classical Greek and Roman arts and culture. In the Middle Ages, mystery plays formed a part of religious festivals in England and other parts of Europe during the Renaissance period. Morality plays, in which the protagonist was met by personifications of various moral attributes who would try to choose a godly life over the evil, and the university drama were formed to recreate Athenian tragedy. Public theater were developed like the Commedia degli Arte, an Italian comedy and humorous theatrical presentation performed by a professional player who traveled in troops, and the elaborate mask, a dramatic entertainment consisting of pantomime, dancing, dialogue, and song, and sometimes players were masked 
that were usually presented in court. One of the most prominent supporters of the theater was Queen Elizabeth I. The companies of players or companies of actors were organized by the aristocrats and performed seasonally in many places. They were called professional players that performed on the Elizabethan stage. The tours of these players gradually replaced the performances of the mystery and morality plays by local players. Gorbuduk, offers were Thomas Norton and Thomas Sackville, also known as Ferex and Forex, was an English play and first performed at the Christmas celebration in 1561 and performed before Queen Elizabeth I on 18th of January 1562 by the gentleman of the inner temple, was one of the four kings of court, professional associations for barristers and judges in London. The famous actor and poet who emerged in this period was William Shakespeare. He was baptized on April 26, 1564 and died on April 23, 1616. He was an English poet, playwright, and actor and regarded as the greatest writer and dramatist in the whole world. Shakespeare was often called England's national poet and the Bard of Avon. His works consist of about 38 plays. Some of these plays were well loved Romeo and Juliet, Hamlet, Midsummer Night's Dream, Cleopatra, Julius Caesar, and Much Ado About Nothing. The four tragedies considered to be Shakespeare's greatest works were Hamlet, Othello, King Lear, and Macbeth. The history of plays depicted English or European history. Shakespeare's plays were about the lives of kings such as Richard III and Henry V. Comedies were common too, that dealt with life in London after the fashion of Roman New Comedy. Some of the comedy plays were The Shoemaker's Holiday by Thomas Decker and The Chase Made in Chipside by Thomas Middleton. For the first time, the ballet was performed in public during this period. Ballet is a formalized form of dance which originated from the Italian Renaissance sports. It developed and flourished from Italy to France with the help of Catherine de' Medici, Queen of France. An early example of Catherine's development of ballet is through Le Paradis di Amour, a piece of work presented to her daughter's wedding, Marguerite de Belvoir, to Henry of Navarre. Money of the aristocrats was responsible for the initial stages of court ballet. For the aristocrats in her dreaming. The first formal court ballet ever recognized was Ballet de Colonies in 1573. A true form of royal entertainment, Ballet de Colonies was commissioned by Catherine de Medici to honor the Polish ambassadors who visited Paris for enthronement of King Henry in Poland. Innovation of the stage. Proscenium was developed. This is the area of the theater surrounding the stage opening. Arches frame and divide the stage from the audience. Backdrops for scenery were popularized by the art of painting clothes. Comedia del Arte, or comedy of the profession, was developed. It was quick with the performance of the characters or players. Baroque Theater The theater of Baroque period is marked using technology in current Broadway's or commercial plays. 
the theater crew uses machines for special effects and scenes, changes which may be changed in a matter of seconds with the use of ropes and pulleys. This technology affected the content of the performed pieces, practicing at its best the deus ex machina, a Latin word meaning God from the machine solution, where the character gods were finally able to come down from the heavens and rescue the hero in the hero's situation. As a result, the theater was richly decorated and the multiplicity of plot turns in a variety of situations characteristic of manualism. A variety of approaches for intellectual sophistication as well as using artificial qualities of the play were succeeded by the opera. The use of theatrical technology to the Baroque period may be seen in the film Battelle. Neoclassical Theater The Neoclassical period was a movement where the styles of Romance and Greek societies influenced the theater art. During the Neoclassical period, the theater was characterized by its grandiosity. Costumes and sceneries were highly elaborate. The main concepts of the play were to entertain and to teach lessons. Stages were restyled with dramatic arches to highlight the scene. Multiple entry points on the stage were evident in the play. Lighting and sound effects intensified the mood and messages of each scene, enhancing the dramatic experience. The idea of changing scenery and backdrops become more noticeable, particularly with the invention of the pulley system that allowed parts to move more quickly across the stage. The concept of decorum, which means right and proper audience behavior, was applied in this period, which means classical concepts of appropriate social behavior must be observed. This period officially established the two types of plays, tragedy and comedy. They never mix these two together. This restriction led to the use of now well-known pair of happy and sand masks that symbolize the theatrical arts. Tragedies portrayed the complex and faithful lives of upper classes and royals, while comedies, which were either public discourse or comedies of manners, tended to focus on the lower ranks of society. Observance to these genres was critical to a play's success. Trivia about neoclassical theater. The first spotlight was used in the U.S. during this period was called the limelight. 
the Theater Regulations Act of 1814 banned drinking in legitimate theaters. Many tavern owners took advantage of the situation and renovated their establishments to accommodate live performances. Romantic Theater During Romantic period, melodrama and operas became the most popular theatrical forms. Melodrama originated from the French word melodrama, which is derived from Greek melos, or music, and French brain, which is derived from Greek dran, to perform. Melodrama can also be described as a dramatic work that puts characters in a lot of danger to appeal to the emotions in which orchestral music or song was used to accompany the action. Opera, on the other hand, is an art form in which singers and musicians perform a dramatic work combining text, hold, a libretto, and musical score. Such as acting, scenery, and costumes and dance were important elements of the theater. It is usually performed in an opera house accompanied by an orchestra or a smaller musical ensemble. Victor Marie Hugo Victor Marie Hugo was born on February 26, 1802 and died on May 22, 1885. He was considered as one of the greatest and best-known French writers. He was a poet, novelist, and dramatist of the Romantic movement. Hugo's literary fame comes from his poetry, novels, and his dramatic achievements. Among his works that stand out all over the world are Les Contemplations, Le Legende de Cyclips, Les Miserables, and Notre Dame de Paris, which is known as the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Quasimodo is the form Hunchback, the bell ringer of Notre Dame and had a good heart and help Esmeralda, a beautiful gypsy street dancer with a kind and generous heart. Esmeralda captured the heart of many men that had always wanted to own her. George Bisset was born on October 25, 1838 and died June 3, 1875 in Paris. Bisset was the only child of Adolf Armand Bisset which is a formerly a hairdresser and later became a singer and composer. And Amy Marie Louise Leopoldine Josephine Del Sarte, which is a pianist. He entered the Paris Conservatory of Music a fortnight before his 10th birthday. His first symphony, the Symphony is Major, was written when he was 17 years old. The symphony had an amazing stylistic resemblance to the music of Franz Schubert. This French composer was a pianist and best known for his operas, Carmen is the most popular among his works. Bizet composed the title role for a mezzo-soprano in the character of Carmen. The opera tells the story of the downfall of Don Jose, a naive soldier who is seduced by the charms of the sizzling gypsy, Carney. His contemporary composers during Romantic periods were Franz Liszt, Richard Wagner, Frederick Chopin, Ludwig van Beethoven, Franz Schubert, Felix Mendelssohn, and Hector Berlioz. Now that we finish our discussion, let us have an activity, and this is matching time. In one minute, match the different theater periods in column A with a corresponding description in column B. Your timer starts now.
time's up. And here are the correct answers. To sum up the different theatrical forms, we have ancient theater, and under ancient theater, we have the Greek theater. Ritual theory focuses on the Dionysus performed in festivals. Sophocles and Euripides were the most popular playwrights during ancient period. Oedipus Rex, Oedipus at Colonus, and Antigone were famous plays. Theater genre was tragedy, performed in theatron, which means viewing plays and slows of the hill. And women were not allowed to perform. Roman theater began in ancient Greek theater. Theater genre, comedy. Women began to perform. Competitions of chariots, gladiators, and public executions as a public theater. Medieval theater, mostly related to biblical stories and events. Performers go from one place to another. Renaissance theater, focus on classical, Greek, and Roman art and culture. Theater designs were developed. Backdrops for scenery. Queen Elizabeth supported theater. Famous actors and playwrights was William Shakespeare, who wrote Romeo and Juliet, Hamlet, Midsummer Night, Dream, and Cleopatra. Baroque theater used the days of machina to create effects in every performance. Neoclassical theater enhanced changing of scenery and spotlight was used. Romantic period the age of enlightenment focus on appreciation of the exotic and primitive. Use fantastic mythical or nature-focused images. Melodrama was the genre of theater. Famous operatic composers were George Bizet of Carmen and Richard Wagner. Protagonist was rebellious who often succeeded. Interest in the common man and child youth, and technical innovations were introduced. Let us have another activity which is completing the table. Name the following theater building in the corresponding theater period. Identify the description or characteristics of the building. You will be given 15 seconds to see your answer in which number on our comment section. Image number one. Image number one means amphitheater. Theater period, ancient Greek period. Description or characteristics of the building it has theatron, orchestra, skinny, and parodos. It's built at the side of the hill. Image number two. Image number two named Triumvir Pompeii. Theater period, ancient Roman period. Descriptions or characteristics of the building. It is a permanent non wooden theater in Rome. The building was part of a multi use complex. Image number three. Image number three named Crescenium. Theater period, 
Renaissance period. Description or characteristics of the building. It has art on the stage to provide atmosphere and a sense of spectacle and scene changes. Image number four. Number four named Teatro Regio Torino. Theater period, Baroque period. Description or characteristics of the building. Auditorium has magnificent decorations, impressive scenes, and technical equipment. Image number five. Number five, name Neoclassical Theater in Moscow. Theater period, Neoclassical period. Description or characteristics of the building, it has a dramatic arches to highlight scenes, with multiple entry points on the stage, and also changing scenery and backdrops are noticeable. Once again, this is Sir Harold, your art teacher and living you at Jack's quote in his line from Act 2, Scene 7 of Shakespeare's As You Like It. All the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances, and one man in his time plays many parts. His acts being seven ages. Our world is like a play or a stage, and all men and women are really actors or players on this stage called the world. All the people enter this world through different routes and exit on a different route. They enter the stage when they are born and live it when they die. During this entire lifespan, every person plays different parts of the world. And these parts are known as seven stages, which are like different acts of drama or play. Keep safe, everyone, and see you in our next live streaming session.